Okay, so welcome to part two of this uh, video on defining a metrical structure on uh, the sequence space containing all sequences of complex numbers. So uh, we got, uh, we're got we looking at this function f of t, and the reason we are doing this is we're trying to come up with a very clever inequality that's going to allow us to uh, prove the triangle inequality in this case. Uh, so I'm going to derive the inequality first, and then I'm going to show you how it can be used to prove the triangle inequality there. So you're just going to have to suffer um, watching a bit of unmotivated maths at first and then you will see how important it is uh, in a moment. Okay, uh, so uh, we have this function 1 minus 1 over 1 plus t. Now it's pretty obvious that um, if if uh, t is an element is a positive real number, so if it's an element of 0 to plus infinity, uh, then the function is increasing. So if I have um, x and y and uh, y is greater than x, it implies uh, that f of y is also greater than f of x. Uh, if you want to prove that uh, without looking at the picture, what you can do is you can differentiate this. Uh, so uh, if we differentiate this, f prime of t uh, is going to be equal to, well, uh, 1 differentiated is going to be equal to 0. So differentiate this, it's going to be negative, uh, we're going to have 1 plus t then we would have it to the power of negative 1, but we're going to have to multiply down by that negative 1, and then we'll get negative 2, and the derivative of the inside thing is just 1. So overall, we get that it is equal to 1 over 1 plus t squared, and therefore that the derivative is always greater than or equal to 0, because 1 plus t uh, squared is always going to be greater than or equal to 0. So uh, the function is monotonically increasing. Now, obviously, you need to be careful with this asymptote, because obviously, somehow, it suddenly goes down over here. Uh, at the asymptote, but as long as we're on a positive real number, uh, then this property does indeed hold uh, that f of y is always going to be greater than f of x whenever y is greater than x. So that tells us that um, y over 1 plus y is greater than uh, x over 1 plus x. Right, so now uh, look at the, remember our old friend uh, that we derived basically everything from, which says that mod of a plus b is less than or equal to mod of a uh, plus mod of b. Right, uh, so that implies uh, that, um, so if we look at this picture again, so uh, a plus b is like the equivalent of y, so we're going to view a plus b as being the equivalent of y, and we're going to view uh, a plus uh, the mod of a plus b, uh, a plus b together within the modulus sign, as being the equivalent of x. Now, because we've got the less than or equal to sign, we're going to get that f of y is greater than or equal to f of x, and we're going to get, therefore, that y uh, over 1 plus y is greater than or equal to x over 1 plus x, rather than the strict, uh, strictly greater that we had before. So we get, therefore, that uh, if we put y in here, we get mod of a plus mod of b over 1 plus mod of a plus mod of b is greater than or equal to mod of a plus b over 1 plus mod of a plus b. And hopefully you can see why this function is now going to be so important to us. Okay, and now another little inequality, that the mod of a plus mod of b over 1 plus mod of a plus mod of b. Because both mod a and mod b are positive, this is going to be less than or equal to, uh, well, it's actually going to be strictly less than, uh, the mod of a uh, oh, actually, though, they could be uh, they could be zero, so we'll make the less than or equal to. If they're equal to zero, then we'll have the equal to. But if not, uh, if a and mod a and mod b are both non-zero, uh, then uh, we'll have the strict less than. Uh, but it's going to be less than or equal to the mod of a over 1 uh, plus uh, the mod of a plus mod of b over 1 plus mod of b. And the reason is that if you... Uh, it is that... Um, these two, we could split this. This is equal to uh, mod of a over 1 plus mod of a plus the mod of b, and um, plus the mod of b over the same thing, 1 plus mod of a plus mod of b. And basically, by getting rid of the b underneath here and getting rid of the a underneath here, uh, then we're just dividing by a smaller number. Uh, so these two are going to be greater than uh, their counterparts in here, and therefore their sum is going to be greater than the sum of these two. Uh, so we overall get this inequality. So overall, uh, by the transitive property, this is going to be less than or equal to this, and this is less than or equal to this. So we overall get that the mod of a plus b over 1 plus the mod of a plus b um, 
is less than or equal to mod of A over 1 plus mod of A uh, plus mod of B over 1 plus mod of B. And basically, that's where we're going to go from now. We're going to use that to prove the triangle inequality. So, let Z be another element of uh, the set S. So, Z is some sequence of complex numbers. Uh, then, uh, the distance between, um, between X and Y uh, was equal to the sum, I is equal to 1 to infinity, of 1 over 2 to the power of I, XI minus YI, over 1 plus xi minus yi. And now we apply our favourite old trick. This is equal to the sum i is equal to 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the power of i, xi minus zi plus zi minus yi over 1 plus xi minus zi plus zi minus yi. Okay, and now what we need to do is remember that this is the limit as n approaches infinity of uh, the sum i is equal to 1 to n of 1 over 2 to the i of this thing, xi minus zi uh, plus zi minus yi over 1 plus xi minus zi plus zi minus yi. Okay, and now what we can say is that... Uh, this thing, xi minus zi plus zi minus yi over uh, 1 plus uh, xi minus zi plus zi minus yi is less than or equal to, now we're going to apply our inequality, remember that our inequality, I'll just write it up here, was that the mod of a plus b over 1 plus the mod of a plus b was less than or equal to the mod of a over 1 plus the mod of A plus the mod of B over 1 plus the mod of B. Okay, uh, so we're going to let A be equal to xi minus zi and we're going to let B be equal to zi minus yi and we're going to get that this is less than or equal to xi minus zi over 1 plus xi minus zi plus zi minus yi over 1 plus plus zi minus yi. Okay, that's excellent. Uh, so now what we can say is that the sum i is equal to 1 to n of these things, of xi minus zi... Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, before we do that, we need to multiply by 1 over 2i. It still holds true if we multiply by 1 over 2i. This inequality is fine with that. And then what we're going to do is sum over i is equal to 1 to n. So I'll stick in the 1 over 2i there. xi minus zi plus zi minus yi of 1 plus xi minus zi plus zi minus yi. And the reason that that inequality does not flip by multiplying by 1 over 2i is that 1 over 2i is always going to be greater than or equal to 0, uh, because exponential functions are always greater than or equal to 0, is therefore less than or equal to uh, the sum i is equal to 1 to n of 1 over 2 to the i uh, mod of xi minus zi over 1 plus xi mod of xi minus zi uh, plus, obviously, uh, the two sums, you can split them up. Uh, sum i is equal to 1 to n, 1 over 2i, modulus of zi minus yi over 1 plus modulus of zi minus yi. Okay, uh, and now what we do is take the limit of all of these things, and if this is, if each of these partial sums is less than or equal to the sum of these two, uh, then the limit of this is going to be less than or equal to the uh, limit of uh, this side. Uh, so the limit respects the inequality, basically. So the limit as n approaches infinity of this side, i is equal to 1 to n of 1 over 2i, xi minus zi plus zi minus yi over 1 plus xi minus zi plus zi minus yi is therefore less than or equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of 1 over 2 to the power of i xi minus zi, the modulus of that divided by 1 plus the modulus of xi minus zi 
uh, all of that in the bracket, and then plus the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation i is equal to 1 to n of 1 over 2i, the modulus of zi minus yi, divided by 1 plus the modulus of zi minus yi. Okay, and basically, now what we get is that this is the definition of the distance between x and y, this is the definition of the distance between x and z, so it's less not equal to the distance between x and z, uh, plus uh, this is the distance between z and y. So we get the triangle inequality straight from that. Uh, so that is the proof of the triangle inequality for uh, this metric defined on this uh, space, uh, con uh, defined on this set containing all sequences of complex numbers. So basically, even on a silly set like that, you can define the metrical structure, and this makes what is known as a sequence space. So the set uh, of sequences along with this metrical property is going to make a sequence space, and it's a metric space.